good afternoon good afternoon how are you guys doing i am doing just fine doing just fine i tell you i'm doing just fine oh today is saturday um 20 20. <laughs> it is saturday september 19 2020 um, I hope you guys are okay. Hope everything's safe, safe, healthy. Ooh, look at that glow. Ooh, that sun kiss. Um, any hoosies. Stop feeling on myself. Um, whew. I just left Penn Station. My hubby wanted some Penn Station really bad. I actually passed up two Penn Stations to come here because I forgot he wanted Penn Stations after work. So I had to drive a little bit further, but it's fine. Anything for my hubby. He hurt himself, so um, he gets to have a treat. And Penn Station is so good. I don't know if you guys have Penn Station wherever you guys live, but here in Cleveland, Ohio, we have Penn Station. It is so good. It is so good. But it is so expensive, okay? I don't understand why there's a sub. It gotta be that expensive. If you want to pass me up, just pass me up. But we both know this this road is good. Jesus Christ. They know this road right here I'm on is going to be a one road. A one way. Like, just a one street. And they're just standing there. Idiots. Anyways. Um, I want to talk to you guys about my EMG testing. What you guys should know. What I wish I had known. And keep it real with you guys because I think that's very important. Whoever watches this, I believe they might appreciate it or if they don't watch it. Uh, I watch my videos. So, uh, Anyways, um, EMG, I believe it stands for, if I'm not correct, I will try to edit it later on and add it in uh, when I remember. Um, I'm a horrible YouTuber. Horrible YouTuber. Uh, it's um, called electromyography, I believe. That's what, that's what the word is, EMG stands for. So what EMG stands for, ugh, what EMG does is it maps and graphs your um, electrical, your nerves and your muscles. It conducts, it, it shows them how it works, um, if there's any damage to your nerves or your muscles that you can't vis vi visibly see. Um, you know, like you just can't look at me and tell me I have nerve damage without having to do certain testing. Especially if there's any, no symptoms of a specific nerve damage, you know what I mean? Like if you have neuropathy and you can't feel anything, they already know that's what neuropathy means is, you know, basically you, your nerves are, I don't know if they're dead, but you just don't have the feeling. You have pain. I don't know. You no, know I don't know. I don't want to give you the wrong information. But all I know is... It's important um, procedure for me to figure out what's going on with me because I'm having muscle weakness, muscle pain, um, uh, um, what you call it, loss, um, uh, muscle mass loss on certain parts of my body. My husband has noticed that. And also the strength of my muscles are not <laughs> where they were. At least, I'm, I'm, I was never, I'm gonna say, I was never a bodybuilder or a person that works out like seven days a week, whatever, but I had a little bit of muscle. Now it's like my strength is gone. If I hold this cup, this this right here, like right now holding this, it's heavy. To me, it's heavy. But to somebody else, it's not going to be heavy. But to me, it's very heavy. So if I hold that for two minutes, I'm going to be sore. It's going to be, I have like constantly changed from one hand to another hand, from one hand to another hand. And that's the most irritating thing in the world. So they want to see why I'm having these things. Because my symptoms are very broad and cover so much of so many different type of things that they cannot just say, well, you have X, Y, Z. They just, they can't do that because they have no clue. The reason why is all the blood tests, all the things I am doing, it's coming back normal, which I am so thankful and grateful for. I don't want any illnesses, any disease.
is yet. I don't want none of that. I want to be normal. But unfortunately, that's not the case with me. Usually with me, it takes a little bit longer to figure out what's going on. Now, I don't know if this has anything to do with the reasons of why sometimes it takes longer for me to get diagnosed or for someone to actually take me seriously when something's happening. I don't know if what I'm about to say has anything to do with it. So when we were doing the first EMG, it took a very long time to get tested. Like the testing took too long, too long. And um, I did not know why it was taking too long. So once, um, maybe about like an hour within doing the testing, they were having some hard time. The doctor had called the main doctor to come in and take a look. And because um, they're like, we can't find this one specific nerve that we're looking for. We've been at this same part. We're like constantly zapping her. We can't find it. When I say constantly, I mean, they were at my elbow, right here on my elbow for 10 minutes straight sending electrical waves 10 minutes straight i said okay after like the sixth minute i was like okay it's too painful like my skin feels like it's about to fall off my body so um when she came in she took a look she positioned my arm in a certain way um then they moved up or like up here and they couldn't figure it out and then they had to basically regroup and uh talk about like what could possibly be and whatever 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 and then they're like um the doctor's like i know what this is and i'm like uh kindly share because right now i'm afraid she's like you are in the 10th percentile of the population good or bad because <laughs> that can go either way She's like, it's actually pretty cool. I said, okay, but what is it? Like, am I dying? <laughs> what What is it? is it? Do I have an uncurable disease? Do I have something that you guys have never seen before? What is it? She said, you are wired different. <laughs> I'm like, I'm wired different? She's like, yeah, you are wired differently from the majority of the population. Um, and the guy that was doing the testing, he was a resident. So he's like, I am so happy you were here today. He said, I would have not seen this for years. He said, I would have not been able to see this. So he's like, you being here today was like an icing on my cake. I said, well, huh, glad to be your, your test subject. Good thing at least you learned something today. Um, so... I asked her, I said, could this be a reason why, one, the test is taking too long? Two, could it be a reason why um, certain things are different on me? Like, I feel certain, like, it's just, I'm, I feel different and all that kind of stuff. She goes, it possibly could be, or you just could, just possibly feel like you're different anyway, before I knew this. I already, before I knew this, I already knew I was a, I was a different, not different breed, but just a different person. I just, I just felt, always felt different, and that kind of nail on the head telling me I'm different confirmed that I was different being different is good being different is, is nice I like it I don't want to be just another regular person but anyways um, so for the first day uh, after they did the electrical part so they put some um, like clips on your pinky and your middle finger um, and also some if you ever got an EKG done those little stickers they put on your chest to put the wires to attach them to measure the, the waves of your heart um, those are called electro electrodes so they put those stickers on um, the areas where they're going to check so they put some on your forearm on your hand on your feet on your bicep on your on your legs on your thigh they put it everywhere where they're going to be checking you uh, so that's how they measure it and then they have this metal thing that has two prongs on it. Those, the two metal prongs, they dip it in like in a gel thing. If you ever had an ultrasound on or seen a movie when they put that gel on their stomach to put the ultrasound to, to do like a, check the baby, whatever. That's the kind of, that's the gel they use to put on the prongs. And then they put that prongs onto you and they send the shock that way. So they gradually start you up. When they first do it, it's just a test if you are going to react to it. And then once they get their base, then they do their testing. Um, I did not ask, uh, well, I did not ask them if it's going to hurt because my neurologist already told me that it is going to hurt. Um, so I already knew. And I kind of did my research at home before I had my 
appointment. If I were you, I would ask how long this is going to take. Is it painful? Um, he did not ask me any certain questions before I started. I thought as a um, person that works in the medical field, I thought that um, he should have asked me certain things. He probably um, figured I already knew these things because I am in the medical field. Um, but uh, just because I'm in the medical field does not mean I know everything because I don't. Um, even if I was a doctor, I, I wouldn't know everything anyway. Uh, so he did not ask. Uh, but if I were you, I would ask or I would just volunteer the information, especially if you have like a pacemaker, if you have a heart disease, if you um, just had, you know, heart surgery, whatever, you know, it might not be such a, a, a lot of electrical wave in order to affect your heart, but it's always good information for them to know. Let them know what kind of medications you are, especially if you use Botox. Um, if you get Botox for your migraines, make sure you let them know that because um, they had to break my EMG testing to, to two parts. The first part um, I did on August 10th, the second part I did yesterday, September 18th. The reason why they had to break it up in two parts is because the bolt, they felt like the Botox would interfere with the true testing, especially the second part of the testing. Um, I guess the first part is to see how you are mapped, um, to see if you, um, if you're able to even conduct this testing and all that kind of stuff to get like the baseline of what your body is. Um, the second part is the actual test. So, um, since I told them like I had Botox, they're like, well, we can't do the um, myesthesia gravis testing on you. That's what they wanted to test me for anyway. So they said for that testing, we're going to have to wait at least um, we would have to wait at least um, like two to three weeks in order to do it. So she's like, beginning of September, mid of September, I prefer you to do like between like the 15th or whatever, I'd rather you do that. Um, but my appointment at the time was not scheduled until October 14th. So I was fine with it because by then I figured, um, she said by then, if you are not better, do the test. But if you are feeling even like a slightly of the same way, get the test done so i'm still feeling this not 100 percent the same way but i'm still having those symptoms um they might not be as dramatic as they were when it first happened but like right now i'm dizzy and i was going to get the food i got dizzy i got i actually stumbled backwards because i was so dizzy um i'm still having those symptoms I'm still having muscle weakness and all that kind of stuff so it was important for me to get it done um so she said to get it done but if you don't have botox or any other medication that interfere with it, usually you get the first and the second part done at the same time. So your appointment might be um, like a little bit over like an hour and a half. Uh, they try to get it done within an hour because especially if they are, if they already like if the first part of the test goes completely smoothly without any hiccups, it might take like an hour. But oh God, I am so dizzy. Wow. Okay. Concentrate. Um, but the both tests combined together and lasted about three hours and 15 minutes. So yeah, that was a lot of time getting zapped and poked. I can tell you that. Um, I wouldn't volunteer to do this test again. I would not volunteer to do this test again. Um, so yeah, they zap you, uh, different places in your body. They, they started with me with my arm and then they went down to, uh, to my, to my leg and, and my foot. Yesterday, this she started with my foot, my leg, and went up uh, to my body. They go behind your knee as well. So if you have knee problems, please let them know. If you have foot problems, let them know. If you have gout, let them know. Anything that you have that's wrong with you, any medical issue, phobias or whatever. Oh my God, I'm so dizzy. And there are cars like right next to each other. <sighs> this is what I hate of the dizziness. When I get dizzy, when I have to drive, it gets kind of scary. Um, I'm just gonna make my turn right here because the other turn is just too deep for me for right now. So I'll turn right here. I'll just wow. Um, so let them know anything that's wrong with you so that uh, they be able to help a bit. You're not letting them know just to, for, to, for you to feel like you're complaining, but they need to know so that they be able to help you better. 
Um, so after I did my testing, they said, okay, you can go home. Uh, they didn't tell me anything. Um, probably because they didn't want me to get scared or whatever. Um, but they did not tell me anything. They did not discuss much of anything. Unless I asked the question, they did not offer anything. So if I were you, ask all the questions you want to ask. Ask them, like I said before, how long this is going to take? How painful is it? When will I get my, my results? Are you going to give me my results? Or am I, do I have to follow up with my neurologist? Ask those questions. It's so important to ask because if you don't ask those questions, they will not tell you from my own experience. So yesterday's appointment, I asked those questions. I said, how long is this test going to take? What are you doing? What is the first thing you're going to do? What's the second thing you're going to do? How long, how big is the needle? Can I look at the needle? Can I look at your the area you're working at? Are you wearing gloves? Um, are you going to be using alcohol? Are you, no, I mean, I asked all the questions I need to ask. I said, why, when you put the needle in, why does it make a static noise? Because they call it finding the radio station. So if you, if you're going to get this EMG testing done, go on YouTube and just research EMG testing, my EMG testing or whatever, research it. There are some videos that actually, when a patient is getting the EMG testing done, they show you and they poke her with the needle or him and they show you, um, you get to hear the static that I'm talking about. It's, not, it's really, literally sounds like a radio station. Like, you know how when you actually move the station and it's just that static noise? That's exactly how it sounds. Um, so they, they call it finding the radio station. Those, those tests, it does hurt, but um, as long as you tell me you have fear with it or whatever, if you tell me that it hurts really bad, my biggest suggestion that helped me a lot was breathing. Breathe in. When they put to poke you, breathe in. And then when they have to push in a little bit, because sometimes they do exhale out so that you can kind of like push the pain out. Um, another thing is do not hold your breath because you could possibly pass out. Um, at the same time, I would ask them to count to one, two, three, and inject so you can prepare yourself. Um, and just remember to tell yourself, they are not hurting me, they're actually helping me. They, this is important in order for me to get diagnosed. Because right now, I do not have diagnosis. My psychologist, she's like, well, you know, you're diagnosed with um, migraines. Isn't that enough? I said, My, migraines don't make you have the symptoms that I have. That does, it doesn't do that. And plus, I've been diagnosed with migraine already. I have chronic migraine. I already know that. What is this muscle weakness that I'm having? Why am I getting so dizzy? Why can I just do the normal things I was doing before? Why can't I? Those are not migraine symptoms. This, there is something, definitely something else going on that I don't know about, the doctors don't know about, so I need a diagnosis. That one, it, it settles your mind. I feel like I'm throb. I am so dizzy. It settles your mind to, uh, you be able to treat it correctly. Once you find out what's going on, you can treat it correctly and move on with your life back in um so like i said make sure you ask all the appropriate questions um it's painful but um it's not too bad um it's tolerable um depending on how much testing they have to do for you um you might have to get taste not taste you're not you're not getting taste you might have to get um zapped a little bit longer like yesterday's appointment I got zapped a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but I kept on telling myself this is for my benefit. They're trying to help me, not hurt me. Um, so it made it a lot easier. <sighs> See what else? Um, make sure that your insurance covers it. You have to have a referral. You just can't go and get it done. Um, so make sure that you see your neurologist, uh, your primary care doctor, because insurance companies, they like to see that. They like to see that you've been following up with everybody and then, then they, they should be able to pay for it. If they don't, then um, they can um, order it by diagnosing something else. 
depending on your insurance and the hospital you work for. My insurance is perfect. I love it. I absolutely do. My car and, and house insurance, rent insurance, everything. All my insurance that I have is amazing. Um, but with that being said, I hope this is somewhat helpful. If it is, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Um, leave in the comment below if you have any questions about EMG or any questions at all. Um, make sure you subscribe because we are slowly but surely growing and um, we need to grow more. So I would be really appreciate you guys um, subscribe and I'll try my best to get a camera to do better videos, to have a better quality videos and uh, better content. I will try my best. But anyways, make sure you like, subscribe and share and comment as well. And I'll talk to you all next time. Love you all. Thank you. Bye.